Hi everyone, I'm excited to introduce you to Sarah, the head of the UK Solutions Architect team here at Stripe. And today we're going to be discussing how Stripe can help enterprise developers build payment solutions that scale and are robust. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So tell us, first of all, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing enterprise developers facing when building payment solutions? Yeah, so I think, you know, payments, payments is very complicated. It's very complicated globally as well. It becomes more complex the more countries you're operating in. For developers, that means repeatedly implementing local payment methods, integrations to different backend systems every time the business wants to add on something new. And that is quite arduous. Um, things like recurring revenue models that are very popular, they're driving new business lines. In, in, in essence, it's just a recurring payment, but the reality is you've got to start thinking about partial months, um, refunds, all sorts of complexity that then becomes a real challenge to build. Um, so there's a lot of complexity there. It takes a long time to build it. And it's, again, some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting that, that we like to sort of take away from people and, and, and provide a holistic solution to that. Yeah, that's interesting. I've heard this undifferentiated heavy lifting from my days at serverless, right? Yeah. And, and specializing there. So it's a very similar kind of value add that, that Stripe have, which is all the kind of backend infrastructure that you don't necessarily need to think about when you integrate, right? I think it's really mm. similar mm. to the journey from that we did sort of clouds to uh, from sort of on-premise data centers, what started a decade or so ago, didn't it? Um, and I think payments itself is, is, is fairly mundane. What's interesting and where I think engineers can then start to really get excited about working with Stripe is that you can then do a lot more fun stuff around the edge using the platform. You've got all the dashboards that are all there and built and you can track and, and do the basics that, that, that the finance team need to do. But then you can start building new models, making the user experience really sophisticated and clean and just give your users a much better experience without a lot of just repetitive repetitive work under the covers. So tell me more about some of the fun stuff. What are some of the tools and the features that Stripe have specifically for enterprises to start building integrations into Stripe? Yeah, I think one of the things that we we talk to a lot of enterprise users about is, our, is a product called Connect. Um, what that allows you to do is really complex um, fund flows that have maybe multiple participants, money moving um, cross-border, money moving back and forth between different different entities. And you're able to model that in the tool um, and, and the tool then will manage moving that money. So when someone pays for something, then the money is distributed to all of the parties seamlessly. And we've, we've done a lot of work with a number of cu customers that, that then are able to use that for new business models, new, new lines, of, lines of revenue for them mm. and to grow their business. And I think it's, it's quite a sophisticated fund model um, that becomes, you know, intellectually quite interesting for everybody trying to, trying to figure that out. But yeah. So if something like Connect is a essentially a collection of APIs that you can use to orchestrate the movement of money, I imagine there's a, a kind of a core, like a 90% of something that all of these enterprises need to do. And then there's, there's the added business value that they need to bring to it that makes their business unique. Yeah. What are some of the ways that you're seeing enterprises customize Connect and other parts of the API ecosystem to bring that added business value? Um, well, that's the joy of an API, right? And I think um, for anyone with a software background, the ability to manipulate something using an API and have that freedom is, is really what's great about being a developer. We all like just building new stuff. Um, so when a customer comes with a particular problem, we, we joke internally that, oh, the answers connect, what's the problem? And yeah. which is obviously not great, but, um, the idea that you can solve really complex business problems using a product that's, that's an API led product and, and, and manipulate that product to do things that are, have regulatory obligations, 
you know, it's people's money that you're moving around. Mm. There's money licensing that we have to adhere to. And, and all of that complexity is taken away because you're using an a, essentially an API to do, to do the problem. Um, we have, you know, travel companies who are trying to operate globally, take payments for trips that are going to happen in another country. All of that is inherently complex, that network of money moving back and forth. Um, and so a product that can just kind of give you that answer is, is really, is really powerful. What are some of the ways that Stripe platform helps companies stay compliant with various countries' regulations? Yeah, so certainly in, in the UK and in Europe, so we have an e-money license here. We, um, we can help with the PCI compliance because we, we provide that level of assurance around the payment data that's being passed when, you, when someone pays for something. Mm. So that removes a lot of burden for companies trying to comply with that. And it's kind of where we started, um, you know, trying to remove some of those hard problems that small businesses had. And so as we've grown and our customers have grown in size, that then just becomes a value add that they can get the benefit of, of as well when they're doing their, their audits. So a lot of enterprises are using Salesforce as their go-to CRM. How can you integrate Stripe with your, your Salesforce management system? Yeah, so we're, we've sort of baked code into Salesforce so you can now take payments via Stripe um, that have all that payment data mapped back into your Salesforce CRM. So Gatwick Airport are using this solution today to pay for airport parking. Um, and that's, yeah, if you pay for it. Wow, yeah, parking, I've almost definitely used that. You go on holiday, mm. you've probably used it. Mm. I think we, we're all trying to travel via Gatwick now so yeah. that we can um, increase that right. increase that volume through through Stripe. What about if you already have an existing solution, maybe it's using Salesforce, but some other legacy payment system, how can you kind of migrate over to Stripe? And do you have any examples of where that's been successful? Yeah, I mean, we've got, We've got a few customers at the minute um, migrating direct debit workloads across to Stripe. And we actually have a migrations team that will help um, large users do those kind of complex migrations. Um, there's often a lot of stored data that you've got to migrate across, stored card details that you want to migrate mm. across. And, and so, yeah, we've got tools and people that we will sort of wrap around those projects to do that as swiftly as and accurately as possible. Can you do something as kind of straightforward as swap out an API endpoint to a legacy system and use the Stripe API endpoint? Or do you have to use all of the Stripe front end framework as well when you're trying to migrate? That's a good question. So you, you can swap out the back end. Mm. Yes. I mean, it is just an API call. I think the question is, why would you want to do that? Why would you go through that effort that you'd need to then test and, and roll out when um, the, the uplift in value is you, you're, you're doing a sort of like for like replacement? And I think to really kind of enjoy Stripe to its fully, um, there's, there's more to be done around looking at how we manage our acceptance rates, how we update cards and store cards in our vaulting system, how we manage the front end and, and get your checkout conversion um, as high as possible. So I think, I think, yes, we can do that. Is that the right thing to do? I would argue that you probably need to kind of look a bit more broadly. So it's back to that undifferentiated heavy lifting yeah. bit, right? You're, you're missing out on all of that if you just replace like for like. Uh, because I, for me, payments is, has become, we talked about the, the move to cloud, right? right? Um, payments historically was, was just, I need a way to take money. I need a way for people to pay for things. And, and we've built Stripe from that. But actually, there's so much more that you can do with taking money in different ways. Like, do you want to take money on an app? Do you want to take money mobily while you're driving around in your car? Does your car want to take mm. money? Um, there's, there's different things you can do. And so Stripe, that, that pay, pay A to B is one thing, but we really want customers to sort of come on the journey as we kind of continue to sort of modernize moving money around. Um, and that's how we try and think about it internally and how can we improve that whole, whole journey for customers. So that's the kind of 
one of the business use cases for migrating over to Stripe. How do you help developers that are doing these migrations think about that as they're building? Like, are there any uh, best practices or ways you can help them understand the capabilities as they're building so they can take advantage of it? Yeah, I mean, that's basically what my team do. It's like we're here to kind of guide you, provide you with that best practice. Um, there's loads of stuff online, but there's really nothing like working it through, whiteboarding the the end to end, looking at how the money moves through the system, um, figuring out what the the guardrails are from the regulations, and we then will work through a sort of solution designing exercise yeah. workshop with you to to kind of help you implement the right thing. And I think you've hit on a, an interesting point there. Like previous experience of mine in cloud, when you're drawing out diagrams, it's architecture diagrams, where does the data flow from yeah. one resource to another? With Stripe, you have that, but you're also drawing out money movement diagrams, yeah. right? It's a, yeah, and Another it's very thinking. similar, right? It's, mm. it's where does the money flow? That, like the person pays in and then at some point it gets paid out yeah. to someone's bank account and, and what happens in the middle? It's a whole other problem for people that like yeah. problem solving. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Great. Well, are there any final kind of resources that you would recommend people look into, especially if they're building for enterprise to help them build integrations with Stripe? Yeah, I think, well, we've got stripe.dev, which is a fantastic resource. My team contribute. I know you you guys are all contributing. Yep. Like, There's a lot of material on there that's really trying to take the, the documentation, but like up-level it into use cases that our users care about. So I think that's probably the first place to start. And then check out our meetup schedule online. Every two months here in London. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, every two months here in London. So yeah, we're going to have um, some really great speakers at those events. So we'd love to see you um, come and see us in London here. Great. Thanks so much for sharing that with us, Sarah. Thanks, Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.